The first attempt to hatch Dakintia rohani eggs and raise the fry was unsuccessful. So now we're collecting more eggs and we're going to give it another shot. This time around we're going to mix up the methods and hopefully find the best way to hatch most of the eggs. So here we go, Dakintia rohani breeding project part two. When I am experimenting with a large egg scatterer like these Rahani barbs, I find that it is better to keep them in good spawning conditions so I can collect eggs whenever I want them. So during this project, I've been feeding this tank very heavily with a high quality flake foods and gel foods. And I've been doing 20 to 30% water changes once each week. The barbs will lay eggs every day when fed this well, given very clean water, and provided with a yarn in the egg trap but I've been putting the egg trap in only every three days so that they give me a lot more eggs at one time to work with. I've been asked to describe the water parameters in this aquarium. I am not changing the water chemistry at all. My tap water has a pH of 7.6, a general hardness of 12 to 14 degrees, and a carbonate hardness of 10 to 12 degrees. The temperature is a cool 72 degrees Fahrenheit. These conditions are also what I'm using to hatch the eggs. The first step is to separate the eggs from the mops and see how many I have to work with. I shake the non-adhesive eggs out of the yarn into a bucket of clean water from the spawning tank. Also coming out of the mops is going to be a lot of dirt. So after I shake the eggs out, I'm going to have to get rid of the dirty water. The non-adhesive eggs are heavy and will sink to the bottom of the buckets. So I will get rid of the old water by slowly decanting the water from over the eggs until all the eggs are concentrated in one small container. Today I was able to collect a lot of eggs. I have so many eggs from this batch that I'm going to split them up into three parts and hatch them differently. I'm starting with water from the a tank where the eggs were laid. The water is not perfectly clean, but it's pretty clean. Definitely cleaner than the water that came out of the mops where the eggs are laid. And I'm going to use a dropper pipette to transfer eggs into each of these containers. I'll use e roughly equal numbers of eggs per container. This is the biggest batch of eggs I've collected so far. There's probably a thousand eggs between these three containers. In my experience, the most important factor for hatching egg scatterer eggs is often light. If the water chemistry is correct and the water is clean, the absence or presence of light can affect whether or not the eggs will hatch. The first time that I tried to hatch the Rohani, I did it in a bucket like this and it got a lot of ambient light. So just in case the first batch of eggs that I had was bad, I'm going to try hatching some of these newer eggs under the same conditions. I will use a shield to block a little bit of the direct light, but there's still a lot of ambient light going into that tank. As an experiment, I'm going to take an air stone, put it inside one of these buckets, and I'm going to put the bucket up here in this very dark box and hatch the eggs up there to see if the absence of light makes a difference. And this last bucket right here, I'm going to put another air stone in this and I'm going to leave it out in the light as a control 
just to see if maybe the, the size of the bucket and air stone going into it makes a difference as well. This is by no means the best science experiment ever created, but through the process of trial and error, I'll find a method that hatches the most eggs and I'll be able to report that to you. The Rohanai project is moving along and we're now a few days after I set up all of those different bins of eggs to see how they would hatch. Full disclosure, I've actually done a few more than that. So I'm really just going to talk about what works and what doesn't work. What works? Hatching the eggs in the dark or in subdued lighting works. And that's where I got the best hatch rates. The bucket that was in the dark got a better hatch rate than the bucket that was in the light with just an air bubbler in it. The bucket that had filtration with a subdued light, that was this one, that had the best hatch rate. And the difference was the amount of fungusing on the egg. With the filtration, I got very little fungus on the eggs, and I'll show you that in a sec. But in the dark, where all I had was an air stone, the, some of the eggs fungus, I got a lower hatch rate. In the bucket that had no filtration and left out in the light, I totally fungus. There were no fry whatsoever in that. So to hatch Dokintia rohani moving forward, I'm going to use this method where I just subdue the light, block it with some towels and some plastic tops, and I'll get a plenty good hatch rate. So you can see the fry pumping around in there. These are the fry that were in the dark. But I want you to notice that there's also a lot of fungus egg in the bottom of this bucket. Now some of that is eggshell that the, the fry hatched out of it, but the stuff that's really fungused up is probably eggs that did not hatch. So taking a look inside of this bucket with eggs, I have removed the filter so the water is still so we can see it. I noticed there's a lot of fry pumping around the back corners. Kind of hard to see on the video, but they're there. There's a couple. Notice also that the eggs are not as fungus. That tells me that filtering the water while the eggs are hatching makes a difference as well. So now what we need to do is take this bucket of fry and add food to it so that these fry can grow. Some things I'm going to put in here with the Rahani are vinegar eels. This is a very small live food. It's very narrow so small fish can get them. This is paramecium. Paramecium is infusoria, single celled organisms. Again, very small so the uh, fish will be able to eat them. So here's my vinegar eel culture. And the way I harvest vinegar eels is I fill this narrow neck bottle up to this gap right here with vinegar. And then I place in a plug, which is just filter floss. And then I put clear water, clean water on top of that. And the vinegar eels crawl up through the plug and into this spot. And then I can take a dropper pipette and I can transfer the vinegar eels to the container I'm going to put the fry in. This is the paramecium culture. It's a little more difficult to see, but basically it's a very cloudy culture. It's got some bacteria in there. It's got the paramecium in there. Um, probably the biggest problem with paramecium is that you're going to introduce bacteria and other organic matter into the tank with the with the fry but most of that stuff they're going to be able to eat I'm going to go ahead and put about half of this culture being careful not to get the crap off the bottom of the jar in there there we go then I'll go ahead and top off my paramecium culture. It'll take a few days for that to recover and then I'll be able to feed off of it again.
We are now three days after adding the live food to the Rahani incubator bucket, which is five days after the eggs hatched and seven days after the eggs were laid. I checked on these fry about an hour ago and they look great, have grown a lot, and I decided to give them some baby brine shrimp, which they are eating. The barbs will grow quickly now. So today is August 26th. I've got two bins of Dakentia Rahani that are cooking. One had a spawn date of August 15th. The other one had a spawn date of August 18th. Both batches are doing very well. Both batches are now getting brine shrimp. The ones from August 15th have been getting brine for three days and those from the August 18th have only been getting brine for about a day. I also did the first water change on the fish from August 15th today. And I did that by very carefully pulling about half the water out and replacing it with clean water from the parent fish tank. Let's take a look at the fry and see how big they're getting. So here are the fish from the August 15th batch. Try to zoom in a little bit. There you can see them in the corner. You probably can also see some brine shrimp pumping around there and that's what they're kind of after over there in the corner. I noticed that these are starting to change color a little bit. They're starting to get a little bit darker. Uh, part of that is the brine shrimp that is in their gut. But I noticed that before I fed them, that abdomen area is already turning a little dark color. I also want to try, if I can, to show you how many fry are in this bin. The ones that are up near the top are really only a small amount. You see I'm pumping along the bottom there. Overall, I want to say there's probably about 200 fry in this one bucket alone. I think that's a pretty good hatch rate. The fry from the August 18th spawn are also doing well. Not quite as large as the ones that are three days older. But they are also eating brine shrimp and they're growing fast. Uh, you might be able to notice that they haven't started changing color as much as the older fish have. But this is another bin that's got quite a few fry in it. Though I don't think I have quite as many in this bucket as I have in the other. Now that the Dalkensia Rahani barbs are eating brine shrimp, I can feed them other things like crushed flake food and microworms, and they're going to grow even faster. That will mean I'll have to do even more water changes to keep the water clean. I think they're only going to stay in these bins for about four or five more days, and then I'm going to move them over to a larger, better filtered aquarium where they'll grow even faster. Probably within about four to six weeks, these Rahani barbs should be about a half an inch long. I consider this breeding project a success, and everything that I read about Rahani barbs being hard to spawn, I don't believe. I think it's much more a case of people just haven't tried. Rahani is probably just about as difficult as the other Dawkinsia species which are bred commercially in really big numbers. So if you have some Dawkinsia of any species, give them a shot. I think you'll enjoy the experience of spawning these large barbs. And thank you for watching Ted's Fish Room.